What is up, Facebook Live? I think we are live. Are you locking the door? I don't know. Are you, are you pulling that up on yours? Facebook Live? Yeah, I want to see if it's, if the sound it's not on there yet. No, it's not. <clears throat> is that Facebook Live isn't running yet? No. It's not. There's nothing on there. Is it under you? Under yeah, it's saying that the broadcast has started. Is there a special link here? I can see it. Oh, I can oh you can? See, I can see you now, yeah. You got 12 people? Yeah. yeah. There it is. We are live. Sweet. Cool. You know if the sound's good? Oh, you can, you can hear me through it? That's good. Steve Freeman yeah. says it's on, bro. Yeah, what's up, Steve? Your mom says greatness. My mom, my biggest cheerleader. Hi, Ma. yeah. <laughs> mama. Mama. Well, happy New Year. Yeah. That was not strong. <laughs> Happy New Year! Before we get started, I, we're doing a social media thing, right? Isn't that what we're here for? So say hi to Facebook Live since we're all uh, on Facebook Live. What's up? <laughs> Broadcasting. Yeah, this room only holds so many awesomeness, so, so much awesomeness, so we had to cut it off. So thanks for joining us. <clears throat> so um, for anyone who doesn't know who I am, I'm Al Stasek. And what we're going to go over today is um, some strategies that you can literally take when you leave here today without spending any money and, and, and start to implement them so that you can start to attract business to your, uh, to your real estate business versus trying to chase your business constantly. Now, a little asterisk, <clears throat> I've done both. I've chased business uh, for, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years, so I started out chasing business, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's so much better when you're getting an incoming call. Who gets, um, who in the last six months, we'll say, has gotten a referral in the last six months? How hard was that to close down? It was easy, why was it easy? Anybody? The work's already done. What work's been done? With the, with the original client. Right. So they, they told their friend, their family, how good you were. Been out of sight. It's trust already. Trust. Who said that? Control. You've established trust. What else? Anything else? There's, an, there's this thing called affinity. And we're going to go over the different types of affinity and why, how to establish that trust. And there's also this this other thing we want to establish when we're when we're working a social media strategy, and that's a that's superiority. Not meaning you're superior over someone, but when you have superiority, meaning you have established yourself as a trusted advisor, they listen to you more. So they're gonna these these people are gonna listen to you a lot easier 
than someone that you've actually had to go chase down and sell them on doing business with you. So we're gonna go over a couple of these strategies. So uh, we don't have a clicker. So Mike, say hi to my, my human clicker, Michael. <laughs> awesome. So if we're having this discussion in three years from today and you're looking back over those three years, what must have happened in your life personally and professionally for you to feel happy with your progress? I just want you to think about that for a second. Three years from now, if you're looking back, what must have hap had to have happened? What actions would you have had to take? Are you going to have to start shooting some video? Are you going to start putting some more uh, social media posts up? What's going to have to happen for you to say, look back and say, that was a successful last three years. So think about that as we start going through um, these slides. So here's what you're going to learn today. How to become the respected expert authority on real estate so you can build a business that allows you to earn 250000 a year or more without working longer hours or dropping big money on Zillow leads. Who's on board with that? How to position yourself as a local expert and attract more business versus chase. We're actually going to talk about spending a little bit of money on inbound seller lead generation. Not a lot of money, but a little money. Anybody in here, if you're buying a, a Starbucks on a daily basis, then you can afford what, what we're gonna talk about as far as this, this seller lead generation. Also mastering your own Facebook, Instagram, uh, video content and lead generation so that you can sustainably grow your business um, with prospects calling you. Now this is, anybody know what this is? Shout it out if you do. Yeah, it's, a, it's this is a sales funnel, but uh, we're talking about top of funnel, middle of funnel, and bottom of funnel. And the biggest thing that I want to try to invite you to think differently about growing your business versus generating leads, everybody talks about lead generation, lead generation, lead generation. I'm going to challenge that and say you should be focused on growing your subscribers. So that instead of... The, the leads, what I'm going to talk about today is not necessarily just leads. We're going to talk about how to grow subscribers, and subscribers turn into leads. Subscribers are the people that are on Facebook today or Instagram today that are watching your stories that you're posting, watching your posts, liking them, commenting them, sharing on them. That's your audience. And would everybody agree that if you grew a large audience and you were to be able to establish trust with them, whether they're ready to do business with you today or not, that those could turn into referrals and leads down the line. Hey, what's up, Chris? I didn't even recognize you there. So we're gonna talk about how to do that. Um, we're also gonna talk about how the techniques you're gonna to learn today are gonna fill that, that, that middle of funnel. That's the MOFU. So Tofu's top of funnel, MOFU's uh, uh, middle of funnel, and what's BOFU? Bottom of funnel, that's where the appointments come in and closings and and, and um, we're going to um, dive deep into how this strategy is going to take care of both the top and the bottom. I think everybody from this won't be about the bottom of funnel because I think with enough training and everything, we all, we all can, when we get a referral, it's pretty easy to walk in and, and list their house or help them buy a house. We're going to talk about the two, two big ones here. <laughs> All right, so how, how do you guys think that we're positioned with consumers in the market today? How do you think consumers think of real estate agents? Well, let's take a look. Here's a couple of examples. Do you think that these guys uh, are establishing themselves as a commodity or a premium in their market, with their marketing? <laughs> I can't make this up. This is... This is Real cut and pasted from the internet. The internet doesn't lie. <laughs> How about this? Find your perfect home. <laughs> and you understand why the why the consumers out there are not having a high um, uh, vision of what we do as professionals when we have these types of marketing things that are people that, like they're they're thinking that someone's actually going to call them. When they're putting one of these things out there next one this is this is funny because i was actually doing this presentation down in um in cincinnati 
<clears throat> and someone knew Sue Stanford. I, I, I'm not wanting to pick on her, but my homes are 100% ghost and demon free. So if this is your, by the way, if, if this is, hey, Tony, if this is your, um, your idea of attracting clients, I can tell you that you're going to attract the wrong clients. And we got seats. We got seats. We got seats. Let's let's make some room for for our friends so they can sit down. There's seat up here. Seat over here. What's up, Tony? Friends here. Here's 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 another one that we see oftentimes. People that are uh, discounting. By the way, um, back in 2000, I joined a company and started a co-founded a company called Ohio State Realty, and we did just this. We were discounters. I'm not saying whether you should or shouldn't. That's not our business model, and I'm not here to talk about commissions. But I will say that you're going to attract. We're here about talking about attraction, and you will attract the wrong clients. I have six years of proof of that. Very few referrals. They don't respect what we do, and um, there's always someone who will figure out to do how to do it cheaper, even if you're a discount. So we call those the AFA, the average frustrated agent, untrained, unethical, incompetent, and irrelevant because they don't actually have a relevant value proposition to offer their, the, the, the market. They usually negotiate their commissions to get clients, write contracts that make no sense. Anybody meet one of these in a Cobro? Clients don't trust them. They make mistakes that cost their clients money, tens of thousands of dollars, not just a few dollars. When we make a mistake, it's a lot of money. It's a big money mistake. They lack knowledge and experience. They usually just stick their toe in the water versus come to these types of things and actually learn the right way to grow their real estate business. And they're doing a lot of selling versus building a business. So I think that what we ask, the we oftentimes ask the wrong question. A lot of times we just say, well, how do I make a sale today? But what if we said, if I had an hour to solve a problem and my life depended on it, I'd use 55 minutes determining the proper questions to ask. Another version of this is um, our friend Renee, Renee uh, Velasquez. Hi, Renee. Her husband um, made a living disarming bombs. So, if you you had to disarm a bomb, would you would you would you jump into that project, really not knowing what you're doing and trying to figure it out? Pulling, pulling wires here and plugging wires there, or are you going to spend the first first 55 minutes, if you had an hour to do it, figuring out what to do it? So what we want to do is design our business like we're disarming a bomb. That's 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 how we want to start thinking about this. A more sophisticated question, how do I develop a system of attraction that brings steady, reliable streams of ideal potential clients to me, asking my, for my advice or assistance as the trusted authority on real estate, or even better, who are predetermined to be my clients. I mean, they're not even gonna shop you. Who's who's on board for that? That's what we wanna do today. That's what I want to um, help you do. So these are just some of the things that we use um, to, to uh, position ourselves and, and make deposits depending on um, what they are. So we have one for sale by owners. Why um, we have one for expires? Why why great homes don't sell? These are what what are called white papers, and what we're doing with these is we're positioning ourselves as a, as as, a, as an authority, as someone who is is a, uh, an information giver, the 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 source of helping solve someone's problem ultimately, and making these available to the market. We can, if anyone's interested in, in how to get one of these, you can see me or um, or Joel afterwards. Superiority, we talked about this at the beginning, and I didn't have a slide with any of my stuff in there, but um, there's really nothing that you're going to be able to do in your market, and your marketing, that's going to give you more superiority than writing a book. How many think that writing a book is a daunting task? I think it is. Yeah. So we, we there's, there's places that you can go, and, and, and this one, The Cracking the Real Estate Code, we co-authored that book, and I actually have a, um, uh, a cover with me on it, which when I used to go into listing appointments and I'm not selling anymore, I would be able to put that book down instead of my business card. I'm putting the book down and showing, hey, and I don't pay much. I never really paid much attention to it or told them to, but 
I'm literally putting a book down that I wrote the book on cracking, cracking the real estate code. What did I do? I established superiority without having to like sell them on Al Stasek. And that was, that's the goal. We also have a, um, one of these, if anyone's interested in, 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 um, having one of these for your listing appointments right here, where it says listing, um, come see us afterwards as well. All right. So we're going to talk really quickly about inbound lead seller lead generation. It's the number one low cost seller lead generation system that generates now business so that you can get an immediate return on your investment. So why would we do this? Well, re repeat and referral business isn't as predictable. Now we want to get there, but in between our referrals, we want a predictable stream of income. So I'm just going to show you how the social media strategies that we're going to talk about during the second half of this training are going to relate into what um, I'm suggesting that you guys do to get these uh, seller leads. So listings get you more buyers. Now that you've mastered the skill set and your confidence is high, you can invest in lead, seller lead generation. And it's the only true path to wealth is when you're turning advertising into profit. So this is how we, uh, we do it. Oh, pro tip. So there's going to be a couple pro tips throughout this. Um, and what I'm going to show you are the exact ads that I've ran. And I'm going to show you exactly how much money I spent. It's less than a Starbucks a day, I promise, on, on the leads that I was generating. And, and long copy is what's, what's really one of the key things with your, your Facebook ads that a lot of people don't understand. Not posting the long copy in there is is going to reduce your engagement. We're going to talk about why engagement is one of the most important things we need with our ads. So everybody knows Strongsville. This is an ad I ran. And I don't know if anybody can see this, but it was shared 92 times. And there's 30,000 views on this video. So I'm going to just share with everybody exactly what we did with this, this ad and what the result of it was. So I had uh, our photographer go and shoot a, a really easy, quick drone video over the Strongsville water tower and then do a flyover on some of the, you know, just do some rooftop flyovers. It's literally a 15 second video. But the fact that it's a video is the, is the whole point. It's not what's in the video. It's the fact that there is a video. And the reason why that's important is that when you're running Facebook ads, one of the things that you should be focused on and doing is growing what's called a custom audience. So all 30,000 views in here, Facebook isn't gonna tell me who actually viewed the video, but what they will do is they'll allow me to create, with a push of a button, I can create a custom audience with everyone who saw that ad and then retarget. The next time I run the ad, I'm gonna retarget it to the same people. What that's gonna cause is engagement. <coughs> We're going to go over what engagement is, but look at what happened. 92 people shared this ad. No, it was an advertisement. It wasn't, it wasn't like some catchy just post that I put up. It was an actual ad that I was running, but it got shared 92 times. Here's the, the, the long copy. If you're thinking of selling your house in Strongsville, this news are gonna, is going to make you smile. Here's all the details. In 2015, the average price of a single home. Basically, what I'm telling you <clears throat> is that the prices have gone up, and if you're a Strongsville homeowner, you should be happy. So we ran this just in the Strongsville zip codes. There's two of them. And what do you think that the, the majority of Strongsville people did? They engaged. They loved it. They liked it. They shared it 92 times. And what that did was it reduced my ad cost by ridiculous amounts. Most agents, just to give you an idea, when they're running the same home evaluation. Now you don't see anywhere on here, but all the way at the bottom of that long copy, I mean, it goes, it keeps going. It wouldn't even fit on here is the little link. If, if somebody wanted to get the valuation of their home. So it wasn't even easy to find, but yet we got hundreds and hundreds of leads. So you go to the next one, Mike, at a cost of $2 and 26 cents cost per lead CPL, is how much a lead costs you. You should all know that if you're gonna spend any money on marketing at all. Why that's relevant and why that's really good is because the average person that's running these exact same ads with a short little, short copy with very, very little, hey, you want the value of your home? We've all seen them on Facebook. They're paying anywhere between nine and $11 for the same exact lead. 
So who do you think wins that game? Person with long copy? So put in there what's relevant. Put in there as if you're having a conversation at a cocktail party with someone who comes up to you in that particular zip code, and they want to know, so what's going on with the real estate market? We always get asked that, right? And what kind of a conversation would you have? You'd have a regular conversation. You'd tell them, oh, yeah, the real estate market's been great. Now, maybe you don't know the stats off the top of your head, but this also positions yourself as, a, as, as an expert because you know the stats. $2.26. All right, next one. So if you're going to do this, automated follow-up is going to be key. And the reason is, is we're all busy. We're busy running buyers. We're, we're busy running, you know, listing appointments. We're busy negotiating contracts. And we're in the middle of an appointment. The last thing that we're, we're going to generally do is jump out and, and answer a, a lead. So one of the systems that we use has an automated lead follow-up system. If you want to hit the button, this is, this is the, the results. We're talking about a 43, almost a 50% response rate. What that means by that is that when a lead comes in with the system that we use, and anybody can get one of these systems, by the way, they're out there on the market. Um, the lead comes in within three minutes. It's, it's, they get an email. They get a voice mailed to their phone. It's called a slide dial and they get a, a text message to their phone, responding immediately. 43% of the people that we sent those, those, those leads to responded back to us, meaning the robot responded. So we're all busy, right? What's the number one thing that we drop the ball on when we start doing lead generation? It's follow up. So we have a robot doing that. Now this isn't com to completely replacing the fact that you have to pick the phone up and make a phone call because you still do need to follow up with these leads. But what we suggest, what I suggest, is you put one of these systems in place. Now we use um, Market Maker. Um, our system has this built into it, our Market Maker system. But um, there's also a, a standalone product that you can look into called Agent Legend. And um, they, do, they do the exactly this, the same thing, except our, our system that we use has it all built right in. This is what it does. This is a follow-up. Um, it sends a no-ring voicemail to the lead within three minutes. Then it sends a quick text. Hey, how are you? Or, um, are you the owner of, and then it fills in the property address or whatever they put in there. Uh, thanks, agent's name. That usually actually is the number one thing that, that gets them to respond back. Okay. It also sends them an email. And then if they respond back, what's cool about this system with ours, if they respond back, it automatically shuts the campaign off. Why do we want it to do that? Because if they responded back, we don't want 30, 37 hours later, hey, um, how you doing again? And it doesn't, it's not congruent, right? So you wanna make sure that you're actually in there calling these, these leads. We're not depending on this uh, as our, as our um, where, where we're gonna get listing appointments out of these. We actually have to pick the phone up and call um, these leads. All right, so I wanted to just start with that because a lot of us have probably, by the way, how many in, in the room have ran a home evaluation ad on Facebook? Not too many. Okay. Well, it, it got popular about four or five years ago. And the reason I'm going over it is a lot of people, these are like trends and then they abandon it. This works. And then you don't need to spend a whole lot of money. You can start out with a dollar to two dollars a day in boosting these types of ads. The key is making sure that you have your audience correct and the zip code that you want to do it and make sure that your copy is right. Spend the time. It might have taken me two, three hours to write all the copy. Go into the MLS and get it, but do it right. Remember, if you, if you have a problem, if you got to disarm that bomb, spend the first 55 minutes figuring out how you're going to do it. This is actually what I'm going to show you next is just going to boost those. Um, and that's why you're here today. It's the content strategy. So we're talking about building an audience versus just doing lead generation. The problem is this, when you're doing your, your content strategy, when you're putting an ad out on social media, 97% of the people that are viewing it are not interested in doing business with you. Not because of you personally, it's because they're just not ready to buy or sell. Would everybody agree with that? So do we, do we, the, the, the biggest mistake that I see a lot of marketers make and realtors make 
is that you, you're directing your message to the three percent only. <coughs> hey, call me if you're looking to buy or sell. You're talking to only three percent of your audience. You're not talking to the ninety-seven percent. And my content strategy um, has evolved. So, I want to talk about the lowest cost ways of, of for, for everyone in this room to leave. We can sit here and talk about how you can go out and spend five or ten thousand dollars a month and really supersize that, but that's really not practical for, for most people. We're going to start out with the no cost or low cost ways of doing it. However, I started my content strategy in 1999, I want to say, and it was it was pre-internet. There's a couple people in the room who remember this, Tony Apatzis. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm not the only one. I'm, I'm the old fart in the room. Well, I'm right there next to you because I started in 98 when Realtor.com didn't exist yet and the listings weren't on the market. They weren't on the, the, the internet. But um, I bought a coaching in a box by a guy named Craig Proctor. And Craig Proctor, it was just, you know, look, I was just hungry to learn how to grow my business. And what Craig, in, in short, the two minute drill on Craig Proctor is he had these ads and you would write the ads and he actually had them all pre-written. Pre you put them in a newspaper and it was called direct response marketing. Dan Kennedy is like the king of that. Um, this is kind of a, uh, um, uh, an extension of Dan Kennedy's training on direct response marketing. But basically it got people to raise their hand if they were interested in something. In the Craig Proctor days, when I was running those ads, it was a list of homes. <laughs> because remember the internet wasn't out there. So they couldn't just go to Zillow. Zillow didn't even exist yet. They couldn't go to Realtor.com. They ne actually needed us for the information. Now the information's out there. But we ran, and, and my point is that the content then was, hey, here's a list of homes that we can get that are foreclosed, or here's a list of bank-owned homes, or here's a list of uh, short sales or, or really good deals. If, you, if you'd like this, call this number. And it was a, it was an automated number. And as soon as they'd call, it would capture their phone number. It was actually pretty, pretty brilliant. Um, I started running the ads and, and it worked. People were calling me. There's only one problem. I didn't know how to transfer them into clients. So I wasted a ton of money doing nothing because I didn't, I didn't get that bottom of funnel part. I was very new in the business, so I didn't know what I was doing. Um, fast forward to probably about 2010, 11. How many in here get the magazine Mimi's? So Mimi's is a publication that goes out to the suburbs here on the west side, and I believe it's on the east side and even Akron. Um, and I started running an ad in one zip code, and it was very similar to that Craig Proctor-like ad, except it was just a deposit. I was just educating that the, our consumer, who I hope to become a client. I wasn't talking to the 3% of people who are going to be doing business with me. I was talking to the 97% and the 3%, so everybody was hearing it. And consistency is the silver bullet. I don't have a silver bullet other than one thing to tell you is that it doesn't matter whether your your goal is to lose some weight, work out, improve your marriage. Doesn't matter what it is. It's consistency is the silver bullet. What I see a lot of people do is they put an ad up, maybe one month, two months, and then they don't get it. Ah, it didn't work, and they scrap it. I remember going on appointments. I can tell you this: the easiest appointments that I ever went on came from, well, it came from radio when I was running the radio, but these Mimi's ads, and they were just a simple ad. I would write the ad about why the best homes on the market don't sell. Why, um, you know, why taking the best pictures of a house versus using your iPhone um, ends up getting you, end up, uh, end up putting more money in your pocket versus using your iPhone to take them. All these just educational deposits I made on the, and I just kept making them and kept making them and kept making them. After a year, we were getting anywhere from 15 to 20 inbound calls from these, <clears throat> these leads, but it was a newspaper advertisement. And I didn't know what I didn't know. I could have actually been just writing blogs on the same exact content. And what's great about, what's, what's the difference between a blog and, and maybe a Mimi's ad? The cost. It's huge. What else? It stays there. It stays, stays there. Forever, yeah. It stays there forever. What we're going to talk about with our content strategy is that it's going to stay there forever. Whether you're putting um, um, YouTube videos up, whether you're putting um, content-driven blogs up, 
and driving traffic that way, it's there forever. And, um, and it never goes away. Whereas the Mimi's ads, I mean, I would walk into some listing appointments and it was kind of cool. They would have the, 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 the ad cut out and it was an ad. It wasn't like an art, it was an ad and they'd have it on their refrigerator. But it was from like 11 months prior because something in that ad, this is way before we caught them very early in the process. They were still the 97%. They weren't the 3%. Get it? And that's the goal. So we make deposits and we can't expect to make withdrawals before we make it deposits into the relationship bank account. Think about it. What we want to do before someone even knows us, before we've given them any value, we expect them to do business with us. And we just can't do that. But if we pile on deposit after deposit, and that's what these Mimi's ads that I was running doing, I was making deposits, making deposits. If you're shooting video on a regular basis and it's relevant to your audience and they're going to share it and grow it, you're going to develop affinity. And it's going to be very easy. It's going to be a very easy call when they call you to ask you about um, how to help sell their mom's house or anything like that. So the, go the goal is to educate, interact, and inspire and infuse the market with goodwill. This is the goal. This is your content strategy from a thousand foot view. And here's how we do it. 100,000, I'm sorry, million Americans log into Facebook every night between 10, 8 and 10 p.m. every single night. Think about that for just a second. It's more than NBC, CBS and ABC combined. Anybody here not on Facebook? You wouldn't dare raise your hand if you were. <laughs> combined. It's nuts. And we see these people spending millions, big corporations spending millions and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars on commercials. And what do, what do, what do you guys do with commercials? I just fast forward or pause it, go get more popcorn, come back, fast forward it. They're not even being seen. But you know what's being seen? Or they do this. This is what we do. Oh, commercial? And I can't fast forward because I'm already there? All right, let me just check here. Facebook for a minute. Oh, cool. This is where the eyeballs are. So what's your highest and best use of time in your content strategy? It's video and Facebook content. Video, 600% more effective than text. It's a high value deposit into the relationship bank account. And it invokes the law of reciprocity and fair exchange in your community. Reciprocity and fair exchange. We give something and get something back. But here's the thing, going back to the consistency thing. It doesn't work like this where we give one and we get one back. We gotta give like 20 or 30 out and then maybe we'll get one back. And this is where consistency comes in. So ask yourself this question. With your social media strategy right now, and everybody has one, whether you know what it is or not. If you're just out surfing and looking at mine or looking at some of the other people, I know Christy does a good job with it, Mike does, or some other people, Michael, Jeremy, you do a good job with it as well. Are you just watching everybody or are you getting in the game? Because I'm going to recommend that you get in the game. The human unconscious mind can't tell the difference between this or seeing you a commercial on TV. They, the, the unconscious mind views it exactly the same way. That's why video is so important. So the end goal is to create authority with your target audience, resulting in a community of people who not only see you everywhere, but you develop an affinity with. So let's talk about affinity. Two types of affinity, surface affinity and deep affinity. How many um, can give me an example of what a surface affinity would be? I won't call on you. Though. <laughs> I know what happens. Define affinity. Affinity? It's, it's our um, attraction to each other, a uh, liking, we, or, or, or we have similar likes. Affinity. I have an affinity with you, uh, a similarity. Yes, surface affinity. So a surface could be like, what you just said, a guy she like, what she like, so <laughs> kind of just run of the mail, maybe a car, something that you just care about. Right. You can kind of hate this. Yeah, so it's, it's the way we dress, 
how we look on camera, the, the quality of that camera. This is all the surface affinity. I think I got the definition. Yeah, how you sound, look, dress, quality, the video, that surface affinity, it's what people judge us from right off the bat. Whether you're seeing a video or you're, everyone up here right now is, is judging me. Uh, whether they like my hair or they don't like my hair. Maybe they love my beard, maybe they hate it. Here's a pro tip. Don't care. <laughs> you should neither. Surface affinity isn't that important. What is is deep affinity. This is where the magic happens. This is where the bond with your audience happens. And there's three pillars of messaging when it comes to achieving that deep affinity with your, with your audience. So these are the three videos that you can shoot that I have done. Now, by the way, I, I didn't disclaim this. Um, some of the people that even aren't with, with my company today have been with me before and know that everything that I'm going to be talking about are things that I'm either doing right now or I have done to grow my business. <coughs> so this isn't something where I opened up a book last night and had to throw a bunch of slides together. Like this is exactly what I've done to grow my business from really nothing. I had no capital from a rich family member to start to a million and a half dollars in, in top end commissions revenue with our real estate company. We started another company about three, three and a half ish years ago called Appointments Today, we grew that to a million dollar company using everything that we're talking about right now. And that took about two years to get there with social media strategy. And then the third company that last year we started, it took us uh, seven or eight months to grow it to a million dollar company, which is eight, eight, $83,333.33 per month, in case you wanted to do math on that. This works. So local smart, local market snapshots community events, and interviewing local businesses and owner highlights. Local businesses, small businesses, we are all small business owners, right? And so my goal was to be a champion of small business in my community. I'm here to serve my community. I want to be the digital mayor and so should you of your zip code and your community. How do you do that? Shoot relevant content that people are interested in. One of uh, my good friends, he's a top agent in San Diego, Kyle Whistle. His entire social media strategy on video is around restaurants in his area. <laughs> it's awesome. So remember the 3% versus the 97%? Combine them, and now we're talking to 100% of our audience. This is, this is the way we do this. Everyone that has real estate or is interested in real estate wants to know what the conditions are. So I'm not talking to just the 3%, I'm talking to 100% when I shoot a market snapshot video of what's happening right now in Westlake, Rocky River, Lakewood, Brunswick, wherever you're from. You got some East Siders that took a helicopter in. Hi, Lori. <laughs> wherever. But they're going to look to somewhere for that expert knowledge. They better see you. You want them thinking of, of you when it's time to buy and sell a home. And they, they should be thinking... They, they shouldn't even know why they're thinking about you. We want to get them and gain that affinity prior to them when they're ready, not, not till when they're already searching. Because when they're already searching, it's too late. Everybody knows somebody with a real estate uh, license. Community events. So, and that, yeah, that's cool, Michael. We can stay here. So these are just two examples um, of what I've done as far as, so this is where I get my hair cut. There's a couple things that a lot of people know about Al Stacey. One, you all know where I get my hair cut because it's all over the internet. A couple years ago when they opened up this shop, I brought my son Matthew, by the way, kids and videos works really, really good. Do it. <laughs> so I brought Matthew, we shot a video literally with my iPhone, and just so you can see the results here, 82 shares, 56,000 views. 56,000 views and it had nothing to do with real estate. But these girls, that own the shop and that opened up um, Wise Guys, they have a ton of friends, right? All the business owners that you know, they have a ton of friends and people who love them and want to see them succeed. So when you position yourself as the, the digital mayor, when you position yourself as the champion of that small business and say, hey, we're going to shoot this, and they say to you, well, how much are you going to charge? And, and then I say nothing. All, all you, you tell me how much money you want to spend on the boost and let them pay you whatever they want to do to boost it and they're boosting it for you and what are they what are they what are you doing 
um, by this. You're, you're making a huge deposit into the community. You're making a huge deposit for that business owner. And by the way, all their friends love you too. 56,000 views. Who can create the custom audience off those 56,000 views? We can. Rock and Restock. Who here has been to Rock and Restock? Yes. So we have a lot of fun. Um, every summer we put on um, Rock and Restock. It's a benefit for the food bank. And um, this is just one of the videos that we did from a couple years ago. It was shared 34 times, 24,000 views. The organic reach one on it was 6,000 people that it was, it was reached. But I did boost this. So what you're able to do when you're shooting these things consistently, I want, I want to just give you guys, okay, well, this is all great. I can shoot this. I can shoot this. What do I do with it all? Well, when you have a business account with Facebook and you're shooting these videos consistently, you're, what it allows you to do is create your custom audiences based on these video views and the engagement, which we're going to talk about in a minute, why engagement is so, so important. It's important because Facebook says, oh, all the people that shared it, all the people that viewed your video, we're going to allow you to combine all the, all the people who viewed Wise Guys with all the people who viewed Rock and Restock with all the people who viewed your Brexville or Brunswick or whatever market snapshot that you're doing with all the people who viewed um, when, when I, in 2016 during the election, I put up a billboard with, you know, Trump and Hillary on it. It got a ton of attention. I videoed it with my phone on the television when it was on the news and put it up there and it went viral. Guess what happens to all those people that viewed that? I got them. Now I have affinity. I want you to start putting the puzzle pieces together right now, why affinity is so important. They're seeing me everywhere. And I'm just selling real estate, but neither of these two things have to do with, with real estate. But I'm developing myself as the digital mayor. So some other topics. What else can you do other than those three? Well, wh what do you, and we can just make this interactive. And um, hey, Facebook, what's going on? Facebook Live. What do you guys think? keeps your audience up at night so full disclosure I'm not looking for buyers and sellers in my business anymore I support real estate agents so my audience is real estate agents so I know what keeps them up at night because I've done deep dive studies and I happen to be a real estate agent and I've been kept up at at night Christy knows I've had those nights where I can't sleep last night it's totally off topic but I have a mouse in my house and this damn thing kept me up Chewing on something on the inside of my wall, I literally had to put a pillow over, you know. So, like, you know, that's not what I'm sure. I hope that's not what kept you up. So, we got this exterminated over the last time. But, anyways, squirrel. Maybe we'll squirrel. <laughs> what keeps your audience up at night? Holler, buyers. What keeps the buyers up at night? Bills. Yeah. Can I afford the house? How, how can I get one of my multiple offers? I'm, I'm, I've lost out three times. You know, how do you speak to the audience that, that's out there that would be genuinely interested in, in the content? Do you guys all know more than you, you think you, 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 you can as far as an expert and share. We just take it for granted how much we know because we're in this business every day. I always say, make mountains out of molehills. We all just look at everything that we do entirely. Yeah, that's not a really big deal. It is a big deal. How you negotiate that sale, how you're able to interact with your co-broke in a way that's that's endearing and, and, and you're working with them versus versus this. These are all techniques. And if you do this in your business, don't take it for granted. Make a mountain out of the molehill, we say. Be the best storyteller. What are the biggest fears about buying and selling? So why aren't more agents leveraging the power of video marketing? Christy Moore, I'm going to call you. Because she hates looking at herself on camera. What else? Well, she already answered it. <laughs> Fear. Too many Fs given. Oh, yeah. And people have a low self-image in themselves. Not Maybe not necessarily in general, but after they look at a video and hear themselves. So how many people saw the, the follow-up video that I did where we, uh, we, we re did a retargeting? on Facebook where I was walking through the office. Did anybody see that video? Yeah, just recently for this this event. 
How many people? Raise your hand. How many times do you think I had to shoot that thing? <laughs> so first of all, it was was this afternoon? Yeah, it was was that right after New Year's or New Year's Eve? No, it was right before on it was, Sunday. It was right before. Yes. Okay. But it was a long like Christmas week right there, right? Lots of eating, lots of drinking. I looked like hell warmed over. And so someone actually messaged me like, Al, you should you should be doing better lighting. You know, your videos will come out I'm like no. No, we needed to take the the lighting away on that one. Because I was walking, how many times did we do it? At least five, six times. I was like, no, this is horrible. Actually, it's probably more like 16. Yeah, it was before we started the walk. And we did yeah, it and, and, and I'll be honest. I mean, look, we all have that, that anxiety that comes up because we want it to be perfect. But the truth of the matter is my imperfect videos are better than your zero videos. It's just the truth. My imperfect videos are better than your non-videos. So get out there and shoot one and be authentic and be yourself. All right, so Facebook. We're going to talk about weight and engagement, what and when, when to post, and your syndicate. This is good stuff right here. So what Facebook does is they have this thing called an algorithm. And the algorithm that Facebook uses is based off of how they weight things. And they weight engagement differently. So there's about five, five or six different things that Facebook says, ooh, I like this. So it doesn't matter, and this doesn't matter whether you're, you're putting it on a business page or whether you're putting it on your personal page. I do most of the things I do on my personal page, by the way. And what Facebook does is in 60 seconds, they decide whether they like your post or they don't like your post. And they do it by how much engagement happens. So what we're going to talk about are the – the five or six different, how, how much they weight every every different type of engagement and a technique that everyone in this room can walk away and use immediately to increase your engagement on all of your videos or just even a post that you have up. So the number one is shares. Shares and comments are the two top weights that Facebook algorithm gives your post. So in 60 seconds, if you get a share, if you get a comment, Facebook's immediately saying, oh, this is relevant. And what do you think they do? Facebook gods put you right to the top and view you in front of more people. And they keep they, they reward you because you're putting up the relevant. This is why it's so important also not to post garbage posts. And I'm just going to say this. I would stay away from <laughs> political posts. You'll never see a political post on there by me. No one, you, you won't even know where I stand because I don't put it online and I wouldn't get into religion either. Those are two things that I would just stay away from if you're a business person, if your goal is to grow your, your, your community. Because if you go to one side or another, you can turn a whole bunch of people off. Now, there's, there's, there's another school of thought saying that if, it, if you go all in on one particular uh, sector, that you will get a lot of that sector. And if you want to do that, You'd be my guest, but I personally won't be putting anything left or right up with regards to anything political on my posts. Shares, comments. The third, likes. The fourth, clicks. And last is video views. So in order of engagement, this is what this is what Facebook looks at and says, this is a great post, or this is not so great. This is something that's not in my presentation, but who in here, and I know that I'm, I won't pick on the person because they know because I've actually messaged them several times about their <coughs> Facebook. They have someone hand on their social media, which there's nothing wrong with that as long as they know what they're doing. But who puts links in the little, like in, in the, the body of your, um, your posts? Yeah, you ever, you ever put a link in there and you see like you got like two 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 clicks on a like, like hardly any engagement? Anybody notice that? Because Facebook doesn't want you coming off Facebook. So if they detect the link in your body of your post, they are going to sync it right immediately. They're going to sync it right down to the bottom. Even if you do the technique that we're going to talk about, which is the syndicate right after this, they're still going to push it down. Why? Because you're leaving them. Facebook doesn't want you to leave them. They want you to stay right where you're at. 
the workaround for that that um, if you want to put a link and if you want to drive somebody to a link that you're not boosting, by the way, this is if you're not boosting something. Because if you boost it, you can put the link in. Facebook don't care because why? Because you're paying it. <laughs> don't care. I'm going to go back to paying Facebook in a minute too. But if you're just putting a link in to share something, what you want to do is put link in the comments. Use emojis. Link in the comments below. And use the little emoji finger pointing down. Link in the comments below. So, for instance, let's say you want to share something about the community. <clears throat> Write a nice post that's engaging, like we're talking right now, engaging. And then write, well, where, where is this event or whatever it is? Maybe you're po posting something from scene or cleveland.com <laughs> or, or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But put the link in the first comment below. This is a way to beat the algorithm because what – as soon as they detect the link up up in the body of your post, you're going to get less engagement. And why even do it at that point? So you're wasting comment, money. So you're commenting on your own post? Yes. Okay. In general, you wouldn't comment or like your own no, post. Right, 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 right. But in this, in this instance, the goal is you want as many people to see the post, right? So if you want as many people, and these are people that you're already connected and friends with. So it could be something about St. Demetrius, right? Hey, make sure you come to the Greek festival. You do not want to put that up in the in the body of, of where you're writing. You want to put it in the comment section and tell everybody the links in the comment section below. Does that first post though stay at first place the whole time though? If you get say so you get yeah, oh yeah yeah because that's your this is on your personal page. If it's on your personal page, no. it, it. What about your fan page? Um, I think with the fan page because it's a business page. I believe like the most the way they they post is that the the the, the latest one goes to the top so I think that but if it's your business page you can boost it and you can actually put that link in in, in the comment section because it's boostable I'm specifically talking about if you're putting something on your personal page and you're not gonna boost it all right so what the post 25% should be personal experiences y'all are interesting you just don't know it I was talking to my friend uh, Mike Reese um, earlier last year we were on a ski trip, and we were just kind of talking about LeBron James. This is before he announced he was leaving and everything. And um, the, the point that he was making is, like, I was going on, just, we were literally having, like, a brandy. It was late night at the hotel right before about to cash in. And, um, you know, we were just having a chat about LeBron James and, and what impact he had on Cleveland. And I was just having a conversation. And he's like, you know, content is around us everywhere. So if you're trying to figure it out, just just kind of stop and have an awareness of what you do every day. If you're showing a house, something's funny. You can you can write about these personal experiences. People aren't they don't really care about how many houses you're selling. They don't. Sorry. It's good for them to know what you do. But they don't care if you sold five or six houses this month. It doesn't benefit them at all. But I can grow affinity with them by really just talking about me. And if they're not interested, guess what? They're going to disconnect, and that's fine. Make some room for, for, for new people who, who are interested. Okay? Personal experiences, 25%. Motivational and inspirational. It only says 25%. It doesn't say 75%. I see people putting posts up of motivational stuff like, all day long that's great but there is such thing as too much overload because if someone keeps seeing these types of posts it loses its spark you know what I'm saying humor be funny or at least try to be funny and 25% should be about your business so that's only one out of three posts should really be talking about what you do as a real estate agent I believe and this is just my personal belief any more than that it start to become like overload. Like, okay, enough. What about you? Because we wouldn't act like that at a cocktail party, right? We wouldn't just be like, oh, hey, Nick. So, uh, nice to meet you. How many houses you sell? Oh, really? This is how many? I, like, that's just not a cool conversation. <laughs> never, it never. Like, I wouldn't want to even continue a conversation with somebody like that. There's probably some people that want to have that conversation, but not with me. Next, pro tip. Too much sauce. Too much sauce. So we, we were telling. <laughs> so this pro tip, uh, when when we do this this presentation out of town, we kind of open it up with the um, with something that most of the people in this room already heard. 
which was a story about burn the boats. So burn the boats is a story that I won't tell right now, but it's, it's about really just, you know, letting go of the things that are holding you back and burning them down. So you can just keep, you can, you can hit your goals and do whatever you need to do. And so I have people when pro tip comes on, yell out, burn the boats. And then I give them the pro tip. So pro tip. Burn the boats. All right, let's burn the boats. Show your audience that you are real and vulnerable by using your negative real life experiences for humor and motivational posts. So what typically most people do is they're only posting happy things about their lives. Well, that, that ain't reality TV, right? Like the truth of the matter is shit happens to all of us. And I'm not saying that you should be a negative Nelly and be posting all these things in there, but I look for lessons. I look for ways and opportunities that I can educate, inspire, and, and add goodwill. You guys read that, ever hear that before? Educate, inspire, and add goodwill to my marketplace by hopefully giving them a lesson that I learned through a bad experience. So I have an example of one. So this was on June 6th when I, you know, we kind of really, really screwed up and said, um, we can't go to Grand Cayman because the kids don't have passports and idiots for, for doing that. And you know, this, this thing blew up, but the, the next one will show you what it, what it did. 110 comments. It even got a share. I don't know why someone would want to share that. That's embarrassing, <laughs> but they did. And, and this is just kind of one thing. And at the end, I turned it into a deposit because what I should have done was use Angie and my friends over at Canary Travel and had them set the whole thing up and they would have told me that the kids, even though they're less than 15 years old, need passports to go to Cayman Islands. That's We'd never been to Cayman Islands. They probably did. <laughs> right. And so 99% of the comments of the 110 comments, 99% of them were like, man, that happened to me too. <laughs> We've done the same thing. We had to go up to Detroit because he was one of them and, and like last minute try to get, you know, uh, passports. What I found was that it happened to a lot of people. What did I just develop? Affinity. Was it surface affinity or deep affinity? It was deep affinity and it's powerful because what deep affinity is going to do is you're going to have people cheering for you. They want you to win when you develop the, the, the deep affinity, but you got to do it sincerely. You got to do it the right way. You can't be fake. People pull that out right off the bat if you're fake. And that's why when you show a little bit of vulnerability and you do it in a tasteful way and, and you, you don't put it up like you're complaining or whining or woes me, um, it, it's going to go a long way with developing that deep affinity. So I, I kind of probably, had this out of the wrong. This should have been like five slides ago. You get 60 seconds from the time you post for the Facebook gods or the algorithm to decide whether they like it or not. Um, we already went over that. So the best time is to post. First thing in the morning, um, around 3 p.m. And between that 6 and 8 p.m. mark, when we said that a lot of people are, are, are logging onto Facebook. Okay? All right. So next. Pro tip. Burn the boats. All right. See what it is. I don't remember. Enter the conversation that's going on inside the prospect's head. We kind of went over that earlier. Be authentic. See, I don't even need these slides. Your syndicate. So this is going to be very cool. I didn't even um, really tell every, anybody that um, leaving today you're going to walk out with, with, with something that's very cool that you're going to actually be able to use that I'm going to be able to help you with right now, but it's going to be the syndicate. So if you guys go on a Facebook, Michael, tell us how, how we can get them into this. Um, you have to go on Facebook and search Nick, Nick, has, Nick, what's the name of the group? It's just called Expert Mentors Live Syndicate Group. Yeah. Real simple. So yeah. Expert Mentors Live Syndicate Group. You have to request to be in it because if you're not in this room, we're not going to allow you in the group. So right. it's the gift for being in. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. How does it keep on giving? It boosts you to the top. The, the strategy is going to boost you to the top of your timeline, which gives you access to, to free marketing to 5,000 people every single day, as long as you participate in the group and boost your posts to the top of the group. So we talked about engagement. 
We talked about wanting that six in 60 seconds. We have 60 seconds to let Facebook know what we're putting up is relevant or not relevant, right? So here's how we can all help each other in this group. And there's these little syndicate groups you guys just don't know going on all over the place. By the way, I think I need to get in on one. Maybe this one. I actually don't use the syndicate group, but if I were be using them, my, my, my engagement would even go out the roof even more. So I think I will. So go to the group, ask to be um, let in, and um, our admins will let you in. And here's what this group does for each other. Now, who, who is in a syndicate group right now? A couple of you already in a syndicate group. Michael, you um, Cross Country Mortgage, Michael Myers. Huh? Would you like to tell us what the syndicate group does for you? Um, the syndicate group, I just joined Facebook probably four months ago. Uh, James, I'm going to say something wrong with that. But I since joining honestly since i joined the syndicate group two months after that on average my phone's getting like a thousand views now because everyone in the syndicate group really starts to they ignite the fire that becomes the engagement on your post because their first four comments once you drop that post into the syndicate group kind of initiate and allow everyone else to feel comfortable commenting and engaging on your content so that syndicate group just is the it's the gas in the yeah. So here are the rules. If you're not interested in helping everyone else, because it's 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 one of these things like if you make deposits into everyone else in this room, they're gonna make a deposit back into you when you're when you're putting your post up. So the goal is this: you put up a post, share it into the syndicate group. If you're in the syndicate group and you see someone sharing one of their posts into this group, like it, comment on it, help a brother or a sister out. Because that's the magic of this group. And what's going to happen is that Facebook's going to be like, wow, it's already getting engagement. And it's going to start picking up. And then maybe like toward the end of the day, go back into the syndicate group again and like or comment on the post again. Because that's going to send it right back up to the top because Facebook's like, oh, there's some more engagement going on. Speaking of engagement, has anyone ever put a post up from like years ago and all of a sudden – someone finds it somehow and they either they hit a like button on it or yeah, comment or whatever and then all of a sudden it's right back and it's going again facebook says oh my gosh someone's really they're, they're liking this back again they they want people staying on facebook they want those eyeballs why does facebook want the eyeballs on facebook money it's because they run ads and they get paid to run these ads in front of people and so the more eyeballs that stay there versus on nbc and cbs and nbc the more money they can sell ads for. That's their business model. Cool. Can you, can you say the name of the group again? Uh, yeah, it's called Expert Mentors Live Syndicate Group. Search that. Yeah, and so everybody knows there's, there's going to be a survey yeah. that goes out for anybody here. And if you just click yes to that, we're going to go ahead and add you to it. Yeah, yeah. We'll make it real easy for you guys. Yeah. So all you guys have to do is click yes in the box and we'll add everybody here if you want to be there. Yeah, that way you don't have to search it. You'll get a notification on your Facebook. <laughs> Awesome. I forgot about that. I got a question for you. Cool. Yep. Um, you mentioned that you don't uh, you don't have a separate page, like a business page. No, I do. You do? Mm -hmm. You just don't? I don't use it all the time. What I'm saying is the majority of the things that I do is on my personal page. I have about 5,000 people on that page plus some followers too. So if I were to go to like some of my business pages that have smaller audiences, Less people are going to see what I'm what I'm doing. My goal isn't necessarily to run ads at every single person or, or anything like that. My goal has always been affinity. Affinity means two things: one, keeping the people that you want to, to hear and see your 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 content there, and the people who don't out. And so I use my personal page. I know that um, one of my good friends, Ryan Stuman, who was just named like 13th best Instagram yeah. person. What was it? 13th uh, best business profile to follow on Instagram. On Instagram. Ryan Stuman, if you haven't followed him, I mean, I can tell you that um, he's a little rough around the edges, but he's a genius. And um, he's extremely intelligent. A lot of the things that I've, I've learned here, uh, I learned from Ryan Stuman. Another person to follow, if you want to see someone doing it right, John Sheplak with a J-O-N. J O N. He's one of my coaches. And by the way, a lot of the things that I shared with you today 
I pay him $500 per 30 minutes coaching. He's my currently my coach. I hired him back in 2016 to figure out this Facebook thing because I didn't know what I was doing. I was kind of throwing darts at a wall and, and, and had no target of what I was doing. So I paid him and he ain't cheap. I'm currently actually coaching with him as well. So follow him. He's 52 or 53 years old. Uh, Sheplak is C H E P L A K. It's J O N. Just follow him. He's fascinating. He's uh, I, I'm blessed to call him a, a really good friend of mine, but he's he's also living his life by strategy. Yes, he's a coach. He's also a semi-pro bodybuilder, and um, he can basically speak on anything from recruiting to um, to, to fitness and health to um, to Facebook and, 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 and uh, video marketing. Um, some of the top real estate agents in, in the world coach with him right now. John Sheplak. Who else? Let's Jay the, Kinder. Yeah, Jay Kinder, Michael Reese. Yep. Follow them. Let's go to the next slide. What else you could do? Facebook Lives. Who's, who's in here seen one of my Facebook Lives? You can rip that Facebook Live to YouTube. One of the ways that I've been able to grow just in the last 16 months, I started growing a national team of real estate agents from, from nine, from what I started with, to over 1,500. We did it with these two things. Forget everything else I talked about. We did it with Facebook Lives, 100% free, no boost, and we would rip those lives and we put them onto YouTube. YouTube is huge. Now, I know we didn't talk about YouTube a lot, <laughs> But frankly, I'm not that I'm not an expert in YouTube, so I'm not going to sit here and spew what I don't know about. But here's what I do know. I know that YouTube's extremely powerful when it comes to searches. I know that when people are searching something, a topic of some kind, for us it's, you know, it could be real estate brokers or, or real estate teams or whatever it is, we want them to find us. I work for Real EXP Realty. If someone's typing in about something about EXP Realty, I want them finding us. And if, if people do, they are finding myself and, and my partner, uh, Mike and Jay. And that's really the main thing that we've done is we've taken those Facebook lives and we ripped them to YouTube. Jeremy. How do you, how do you, what do you have to do to rip them to YouTube? Um, that's something you'd have to ask Michael. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to do it. But it's not that difficult. When, no, yeah. you don't want to copy the link. Yeah, when, when you're on your posts, you have the bottom where, where you can like, share, comment. But in the top right of that post, there's three dots. You click that and you get different options and you can download your own videos. Once you download it, you can take it and upload it to YouTube. By the way, on YouTube, thank you. Uh -huh. The same principles apply. Put long copy in. You know, in fact, the best thing to do is to actually transcribe the entire video. And you can pay a company to do that so that you're not doing it. You're going to get massive, massive amounts of SEO um, by doing that in the search engines. Subtitle is very cheap to do it. To get the subtitles out. Yeah. And it's very good. Video blog and, um, oh, there it is. Subscribe for SEO. It's like I knew it was there. Next. Rip your sound for a podcast. Now, I know I'm giving you guys a lot, and I'm not going to go deep on this. Um, you can literally take... A lot of the videos that I've shot, I've ripped the sound and I made them into a podcast. I did that with Bobby Rudder, did it with Carlos Jones, um, with a lot of the, the people that I've interviewed. Um, Andrea Vecchio started out as a video, actually a Facebook Live video. We ripped that sound off of there and we put it up on in, under our podcast. So why podcast? Why should we podcast? Never goes away. Never goes away. What else? <laughs> Podcasts are the fastest growing media like that's out there right now. And people are listening to them. They don't, you know, what's what's kind of like better about podcasting is people don't literally need to watch. You could do it on the treadmill. You could do it on your run. You could do it while you're doing laundry. You can listen. You, can, you don't have to like actually watch it. A podcast you can listen to. So it's more convenient and they're free. So this is um, back in, I think, May, April, I'm sorry, April 23rd, this came out. Google has a new podcasting strategy that completely reimages how people find and listen to shows. The other part of this says this, 
Zach says that our team's mission is to help double the amount of podcast listening in the world over the next couple years. And podcasts are going to show up in Google searches as first class citizens. This is huge. And it's easy to do. The truth of the matter is, you don't have to recreate all this stuff. If you're being intentional and aware of who your audience is and what you want them and why you want them to watch you, why you want them to listen to what you have to say, be intentional, plan it out. I'm not here to give you that blueprint on exactly how to do it, but you could probably do it in about two to three hours and sitting down and plan almost your entire year out, if not the next six months of what content you're going to put out there. We did that with our training series that we're going to invite you to to, to next um Next month's training too. We sat down and our, our annual strategy, we laid out the whole all next 12 months of what topics we want to cover. How do you think we we came up with the topics, by the way? Same strategy. What's going on inside the, the, the heads of our audience? What can we help them with? What can we make deposits into their lives with? That's how we come up with our content. So they're going to make podcasts first class citizens alongside text, images, and video results. Above video. Think you need a podcast? By the way, subscribe to my podcast. <laughs> Pro tip. Burn the boats. Let's burn them. What do we have here? So I, I said I was going to circle back to um, Facebook ads and, and, and where to run them. When you start a Facebook ad, never never use the whole the where you ever see the button on boost where you're like, would you like to boost it for 20, 30, 50? Never use that. What they're gonna do is they're gonna start you off, they're gonna basically divide your money by the number of days you want to boost it, and, and that's really gonna be it. What Facebook likes is you to spend more money. So what you want to do is start your ad off with like a dollar, dollar fifty a day and throw it into the syndicate group. Your video, the cost, what we, what we look at is cost per video view, right? So if, if impressions are important because that's gonna give us the affinity, right? Then we want as many people to see it as possible. If you take advantage of the affinity group and you're boosting your, your, your post, you don't need to spend a whole lot of money. Start the first day off with a dollar. And then go back in and look and see how much you're gonna get a, what's called a relevancy score. The goal is to get a 10. In order to get a 10, you need, you can't get a 10 by just spending more money, by the way. That's not going to get you a 10. What gets you a 10 is engagement. How many times it's shared. Those ads that I was showing you guys were getting nines and tens. They were scoring nines and tens in the relevancy. The reason why that's important is that your dollar stretches. I could spend $30 where a person who's not doing this correctly and not putting the right content and the right copy out could be spending a hundred dollars and I'm actually getting more views on my video. Is that better? More with less? Absolutely. So start at a dollar. Then after about a day or a day and a half, look and see where you're at and add 50 cents or 75 cents a day or add another buck a day, but do it slowly. What Facebook is going to see is, Oh my gosh, they're spending more money. I like that. And they're going to put you right back. These are just little hacks and little tricks to, to try to beat some of these algorithms. Pro tip. Burn the boats. Burn them. Who's, in, who's on Instagram and wants to grow their Instagram followers? So I struggled with this, and this is a little bit of a, a hack and a, and a little bit of a cheat, but you have to do it carefully. If you do this the wrong way, your Instagram account could be deleted, and I'm not going to be responsible for that. All right? So this is called Growgrass. It's a marketing platform for, for Instagram. So what Growgrass allows you to do, and it's cheap, what is it? 10 bucks a month? Nine bucks? 12 bucks a month, something like that. And it basically took my Instagram followers from 900 to, I think it's like 5,600 or something like that, in about five months. And the, the reason it does is, is that you can actually program this to like and comment on, on other people's posts that have a hashtag specifically in it. So everyone here knows who my audience is. So my hashtags that I put in there that I wanted to comment on people's, they may have put KW, they may have put Howard Hanna, they may have put Remax, they may have put 
EXP. They may have put Caldwell Banker or, you know, hashtag, right? So anybody did a hashtag with their company on it, I was liking that post, but my robot was doing it for me. And when someone likes the post, you, you like somebody's post, what's often happens after that? They follow you, right? You can also set this thing to automatically comment, but here's what I would recommend. Set it on very, very low. Our boy Nick Kropansky over here can can attest that they uh, yes. you, you can you can set this thing on super speed, right? And they will probably delete your Insta Instagram account. So I don't want anybody to lose their Instagram account. Yeah, there's one other thing that when I reached out to them, they let me know after everything got deleted. It was uh, you're, you have to have it turned off for at least four hours a day because if you're all if you're auto liking things, even if it's very slow all throughout the day, nobody's up 24 hours straight. Mm -hmm. So they're able to pinpoint it right away if you're using like a bot. So you have to have it turned off for at least four hours a day. Yep. So this is a great way to interact and grow your your, your community. So if you, let's say you work um, Strongsville, Ohio, or Brunswick, or, or here in Westlake. If anybody's tagging, you know, you're looking for sellers in Westlake or, or something like that. If someone's tagging Westlake or Westlake schools or stuff like that, these are the types of I want I want those people to follow me and I want to follow them because I want to try to get affinity through them. And Instagram, I, I believe, is one of the fastest growing platforms out there. But it's also one of the more elusive ones in, in getting people to follow and follow back. So there's just a little, a little shortcut for you. Remember the goal is to inter educate, interact, inspire, and infuse the market with goodwill. So the first thing, connect with me if you haven't already. I don't really do Snapchat, so you can probably delete that one. But the other three, um, I got a public profile, which is a business page that everybody else can do as well. And that you can run ads from. And then you got your personal, connect with me on uh, Instagram at, at LB Stasic. And I want you guys to come join us next month on February 7th. Our coach, Joel Hollow. Where are you at, Joel? There he is. He's going to do an awesome training on how to make $250,000 on a zero budget. Um, it is not social media training. It's straight up his bows. Lowest hanging fruit for sale by owners expired. Why they're free, especially for sale by owners. And then if you wouldn't mind um, to get into this affinity group, if you guys can all pull up your phones real quick, this will only take less than three minutes. And then do we got some lunch yet. Yeah. I'll smell it. Yeah. You know what's out there. So if you just open up your browser and go to realestatecleveland.net, please do me a huge favor. You'd make me so happy. Realestatecleveland.net. Just tell us how we did here. This is a survey that's only going to really take you about two minutes, actually. Everybody get that? What's cool is the, the tool that we made this survey with is the same tool as they use their autoresponder with. So these surveys can actually go out on an autoresponder, like if you found a home yet, things like that. Yeah, so if you do a lot of lead generation, um, you know, with buyers or, or, or anything that has to do with online lead generation, surveys are a great way to what we call shake the trees and get new clients that you know they're, they're hiding in your database somewhere but you don't know great way to do it is a survey do you want to go through the next Michael yeah yeah so next first name last name email phone how would you rate the event please don't put poor I'll get fired what's the number one thing you need help with put it in there doesn't have to be a long book, just a couple words, sentence. And if you want to write this down, call alb.com, C A L L A L B I E.com. That's my schedule. Anybody in here who has a question or anything that we went over today can get in um, into my, my schedule at any time that you have an opening. Just click it and take it. And uh, my time is yours for that 30 minutes. But what's the number one thing you need help with? If you want to be registered for that next um, thing that we're doing on the 7th, just click that button. And if you want to be added to the Expert Mentors Live Syndicate to start growing your engagement,
click please add me to the syndicate next how clear are you with your exit strategy and your real estate business i'm just curious very clear somewhat clear not so clear and last if you'd like to schedule a private call with myself or one of our other leaders about growing your business with exp confidential and private you go ahead and collect yes or if you're no if you're already with exp please click no or if you're all set then click that joel is that lasagna ready <laughs> Sorry. Made by me. is it lasagna no, what is it i didn't order it. pasta anybody like antonio's Antonio's, y'all hungry? I think that's it. Thanks for coming out.